back to the Bracknell in London to make decisions that are in our best interests. So what I will be doing is, and I already have done, I've had a further meeting with Theresa May about it. We're then going to have a meeting with the Secretary of State for Health um, in the next couple of months after the Queen's speech takes place. Um, and that's what I can do, is I can keep pushing and saying, who is responsible for leading this? Because what the mantra you get at the Department of Health is the commissioning groups have got to lead it. And the problem is, is that how many commissioning groups have we got in this region? And how many of them are going to agree as to where the location would be? Because as you've just said, they want it to be in Bucks, or they want it to be in Slough, or they want it to be in... You know, wherever you, you end up, there isn't one person responsible for 650,000 people. If there was one person responsible for what was best for 650,000 people, you'd have a decision. But it, because there isn't, it's all is spread it ridiculous out. Is to think, in terms of, you've got a police commissioner for the Thames? Yes. Yes, I know you have, yeah. Could there be a... And you have a police constable. You know, so could there be a, responsible. A, um, a health commissioner for the um, Thames? Now. Well, I mean, there could be an argument for doing that. I'll pass that policy idea on. Um, I, I, I personally, I think that what will drive this eventually is that the, the hospitals, and you probably need three to merge, not two. Three hospitals will merge, and I think the financial realities of that merger will drive a need for something, a decision to be made. Um, my concern is, is that they may say, right, we'll, we'll develop one of the sites. And the problem is that all of the sites, none of them are appropriate, really, for the, the population half a million people to get to. And so at that point, I think, you know, I will start banging the drum again and saying, look, it's got to be at least on a motorway. Apparently there's a site, somebody suggested to me that there's somewhere near Binfield that could be big enough or something like that on the A3T9M. And look, I really don't mind. All I, all I want is, is a hospital that's fit for purpose for the 21st century to provide the appropriate care. Um, and however much the current hospitals do their very best to provide that care, um, I think they would all agree that the buildings and the structure and their locations and their staffing problems that they have on, on each of those sites, the challenges that they have with junior staffing and the like, um, that they would probably be providing better care in a, better, in a different environment. And I think they probably don't want to say that too publicly because they don't want to worry people, but I think that is the truth, really. And um, it's what's driving, actually, I mean, only last week, um, in London, it was announced that oncology services, so cancer care services, are consolidating onto fewer sites. Which means cancer care is not going to be offered in hospitals where it once was. And that was announced last week, and the reason it's being done is because it will improve the quality of care offered to patients on fewer locations. So now you've had stroke services consolidating in London, we're now having oncology services uh, consolidating in London. Um, it's inevitable that this is going to happen. This type of concept is going to happen in our lifetimes. What I'm trying to do as your MP is to try and make the location as accessible to us here as is possible. If this, you know, hopefully we do get a new hospital with all these satellites yeah. around the yeah. outside, in what order will they be built? Would you envisage building like the Bracknell Health Clinic and other clinics around and yep. then build the hub? Um, or build the hub and then forget the rest? Well, that's a good question. I mean, actually most of the units around exist. I mean, I'm not, in, I'm not in, envisaging anything new being built because the Bracknell Health Clinic is Bratt's Bridge. I mean, that's, that building is, and that site is... There are, I mean, if you're looking at get, getting rid of Wexford Park, you will need some, sure. something, something. So in answer to your question, um, no, you would have to build the hospital first, the hub hospital first, whilst the other hospitals are operating. Um, there's no choice but to do that. I think that's what they did in, um, in Norwich. They did that. <coughs> they were building a big new hospital outside of Norwich, um, which is actually the one I used as the... Yeah, and the main concern is Sod's Law is going to cost more than yes. the, your planning. Yeah. So we're going to get a big hub hospital, yeah. and then we'll have a satellite here, a satellite here, yeah. and the rest of them will drop off the... Uh, sure. But I'm not, as I said, I, I'm retaining, um, the only one that's not being retained on that list is St Mark's, because you couldn't justifiably keep St Mark's with hospital junction 8-9. So if you're at 8-9, you know, the, 
feeling maybe they don't acknowledge it. You know, it's, it's, it's no, I mean, and it's an, it's an asset that has a lot of value because of its location in Maidenhead. So I thought that that did, to my mind, didn't make any sense to retain it. But the, the, the actual hospitals that provide the care have to be functional whilst that one is being built, the main one is being built. Your point about sucking away money from the, up, the upgrading of all the others is a fair point, but I would say to you that some of the hospitals we were looking at, I think the one in Coventry was like 300 million. Mm -hmm. We factored in significant sort of, you know, I've not tried to, to sell what's only going to cost this, so I've actually probably overestimated the cost. <coughs> um, the piece of land at Junction 8 9 is eerily appropriate. Um, we, in that we've we actually had some architects come to us and they've done some pro bono work for us and done some drawings which we're not allowed for commercial reasons we can't share with the public because they obviously own them and it was quite odd to see this this piece of land developed into a hospital in, in pictures it was quite remarkable actually what they did and actually the lie of the land and the fact that there are actually hills beside it's actually dipped in signs of actually it's not that imposing so in terms of people's fear that it's going to be some big massive building that's going to scar on site, it doesn't. And they've, they've shown how, how it would work. The stream that runs through it is perfect for the location of a hospice, for an elderly ward. The whole thing works, and it's the right size. There's enough space for enough car parking and the like. And there's also <coughs> scope for direct feeders off the motorway, so your sort of response, blue light time response is better. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, White Waltham has the airfield for the helicopters. Because one would envisage in this hub and spoke model that you can afford to have more than one hospital. Because you're, again, you're saving your ongoing costs. Because just remember, the hospital costs, and look at you gentlemen at the back, you will know more than me, Co hospitals cost a huge amount to heat. And the electricity costs. And the reason they do is because they're in very pretty, you know, pretty shoddy state. Because invariably the hospitals have been bolt on, bolt on, bolt on, bolt on. If you're building a new hospital that is going to be an energy efficient building, and it, you know, your running costs are going to be less as well. Um, so, in effect, you know, a couple of million for another helicopter is almost peanuts in the scheme of things. So, you could have then a better service for, uh, say, there was a, God forbid, there was a really nasty traffic accident in central Frankfurt. And there was some cervical trauma, neck trauma, whatever. You know, you could dispatch a helicopter, you know, boom, in. Um, and then you're talking four or five minutes transfer time. And those sort of things are more feasible and more doable if you're saving money in other ways and being more cost efficient. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I just genuinely passionately believe this is right for everyone. You know, and I, and I, and I, and I you know, I, I just wish I could press a button and make it work. First of all, I know that you're saying we're driving it forward, you've got Theresa May and going to see yeah. Jeremy Hunt's ballot. That's all sort of pushing it down the political lines. Yeah. And as far as I know, um, a lot of these developments seem to come around through trust pushing them and trust yes. producing yes, safe yes. yes. And I'm just wondering what response you've had from trust and whether yeah. your idea, I mean, this gentleman said that it's not coming up yeah. in a state strategy yeah. that they're being produced, it's not coming up in PCC no. and CCG talks. No. And actually, I'm just wondering if it is going to be pushed, which trust is going to push it? Well, you make a fair point. Um, I met with a group of people from Northumberland um, in Westminster last year who came down to congratulate me on the fact that I'd done what I'd done, to point out that it took them 14 years in realising they needed to consolidate their services in Northumberland to actually where they are now, which is a new hospital the A1 providing services to the whole region. Um, and they pointed out that the problem was, was who drove it, who, who took it on. In the case of that situation, it was an obstetrician. An intriguing um, situation because obstetricians, it's all about time. Obstetrics is all about seconds and minutes. You know, if you're a woman bleeding, it matters. And um, he had realised that he had a real problem in their part of the world with a disparate provision of care and he needed to bring it together. Um, you're right that it is going to be a trust driven situation. At the moment, um, there isn't anybody who's grabbing it. What you hear in private compared to what you hear in public is slightly different. 
from some of the chief executives. Um, as I said, I think the third trust joining a merger type of situation will probably be the driver, will be the precipitant for, some, for a bigger picture. I still don't find it surprising that it is not part of any discussions because the idea that you can maintain pr appropriate services on Wexham Park and Privy Park sites going forward I think is you know, stretching it a bit. They're going to do their best, I'm sure, of course, um, but I think that you probably need a third at which is point. That third thing will work? I, my hunch is it will be the world. I don't know. It will be. Even though they've got but, their own acute hospital, they still. Yeah, but, they, but their acute hospital doesn't serve a big enough population. Could we okay, so, so the challenge, I think, sorry, the challenge of Lord Barnes is, is that they do go out towards Newbury and West Berkshire. And I think there are some issues with regards to those communities going westward to Swindon. So there are knock on effects, which is what I said at the start. There are issues over where trusts where the population goes, and maybe there needs to be some changes in terms of the local hospital that you referred to. Um, but these are issues that are down the line in, 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 for me. As far as I'm concerned, that community, and I mentioned Royal Barks but it, it, down there, I didn't include it in the major plan. I and I actually think that I possibly made a, a mistake there with going with the merger with South Barks. Even though these two wonderful gentlemen who've been at every meeting are from South Bucks, I have encountered more resistance from Buckinghamshire than from anywhere else. Buckinghamshire seems to think that it can merge, that it can merge to hub. It wants, it understands the logic of hub and spoke. There's no problem with that. But Buckinghamshire, because it's long and thin, there are real logistical difficulties in people transporting backs and forwards. And so, to my mind, as somebody who's from South Bucks and knows Bucks inside out from a medical point of view from working as a GP, I think they're getting it wrong. But, but what can I do about that's it? They are very... That's because they're taking this parochial... Bucks, it's got to be a century. Yeah. Can, 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 I just, can, can I just point out one other thing? That within Bucks, we have two hospitals, two major hospitals, three times they failed to get foundation now, since, since 2008. Now, they have a close affinity with John Radcliffe, and one of the fears is that Bucks and John Radcliffe would combine, and that would then, you'd need to put the weight in yep. here. You'd be removing that Bucks element, which might put your sort of centre of gravity. Well, it would, well I mean, yeah, I mean, in essence, if, if, if it was Royal Parks, I would suggest that probably they'll go to Junction 10 in terms of where they would look. I'm not saying there's a site there. I don't know if there's any land there. Please don't interpret that as me saying that's where it will be. But if you're looking at it, if you're thinking of bringing Fribble in, Junction 10 becomes a more realistic journey time from Camberley and all those sorts of things. So, but I chose Junction 9 because I went with South Parks and because I knew Wickham had a significant problem with its South Parks has a problem with its healthcare services. That's why these gentlemen invest so much of their time. It is a problem there. And I, um, but as I said, it, if it was another trust such as Rob Barks, then, then that location may very well move westward. Um, would you look at downgrading Rob Barks then? Well, Rob Barks would have to close. Placing it also. As, as an acute hospital yeah. in those circumstances. Of course. Of course. I mean, you would retain the same type of service in Reading as, as I'm advocating in SLAB, mm -hmm. i.e., Community clinic offering outpatients and everything else. Yeah. But if that was to happen, of course, you can't retain the whole concept of this is that you have fewer acute emergency. So, this is our checking, because obviously, World Box isn't acute. Yeah. So, but you would, because but that's so not Wexton. mentioned in the report. So Sorry. That's not mentioned. No, because the, as I've said at the start, I had to choose a location that's and choose a merger. Uh, but I'm not wedded to it. It's not something I'm going to die in a ditch for. What I'm wedded to is the concept of hub and spoke being rolled out across my entire country. To be honest with you, I think it would be in the best interest of everybody in the country to adopt this approach. I actually think that somebody in Whitehall should be joining with the national plan and doing it from Whitehall. But I'm getting no support for that at the moment. 
and I'm certainly going to persevere because I think it's illogical that it isn't a central plan. I'm not about introducing a marketing. You can't have a marketing in acute healthcare. If you have a heart attack, you have a heart attack. You know, it's not, it's not like I go to the supermarket. Oh, today I go to Morris's, tomorrow I go to Sainsbury's. A hospital is a hospital. So, but in view of the fact that there isn't a national plan, I had to choose a dot, I had to choose, and then work around it. And I chose the area I knew best from clinical practice, um, as, as well as recognising the areas that were being covered. Bracknell forever has been shortchanged on healthcare. I mean, I worked at Bracknell as a GP five years ago. Well, the number of years, the yeah. Yeah. corporation was promised the hospital. Yeah, I know, I know. Like when the staff college closed, we thought it was a Of course. Of course. I mean, I, I know all those stories, sir, and, and I, remember, <laughs> I remember being at Heatherwood Hospital as an out of hours GP and people turning up there inappropriately, you know, with acute presentations. And, um, you, know, you know, it ceased to be a proper hospital over a decade ago, and no one knew. No one knew. Population did go know. through a stage where their own AME had to close because they didn't have any staff. The reason they couldn't have staff, and this is it's not just about money. I mean, it, it, money plays a part in all of these things, of course it does. But um, Heatherwood was on my scheme, House of the Scheme, at my medical school. All right, there was a junior the House of the Post at Heatherwood. And, and it, it was well known in our medical school. You went there and it was a bit seat in your pants. And, and it only lasted for another couple of years, and then it was withdrew from the scheme and the deanery. Also, deanery stopped recognising it as a training post. There were real issues at Heatherwood for a number of years, so. and so it's, this is not a new story. And what amazed me in the 2010 general election was I was on the doorstep, and I was being just as honest as I've been this evening. Okay? There were a couple of people who know me a bit from local politics here. I've been candid about this. All along, I couldn't believe I was bumping into people in Bracknell who wanted, who, who viewed Heatherwood as a place to go for a heart attack and a stroke. If somebody was really sick, they were still thinking I was going to go to Heatherwood. And so I, I sort of realised then that there was a real problem because it hadn't been a place to go for over 10 years. Um, so, but in answer to your question, yes, yes, if it was merged with Royal Barks, yes, Royal Barks would not have a cash department, the cash department would be on the M4, but they would have. A similar sort of setup downtown, so that people could go to for everything else. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't, my 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 Reading MP colleagues will be shaking with fear that they have to have said that now. But it's the truth. It's the reality, and that and that's how it's going to be. And, <coughs> and we need to recognise that as a population, as a country, that we're going to need fewer acute hospitals in the future. So it has to be that they're on. Trunk roads, big roads, you know, accessible to more people. Yeah, it, I, I hate to um, agree with politicians, you know, because um, I'm usually having a go at them. But um, effectively, what Philip said, you know, does make sense in, in its entity. I can tell you now is that Wexham Park used to have an acute stroke unit, hasn't got one now. It's at Wickham because they had a meeting between them and they decided that the best place to put it was Wickham. And I'll tell you why it's gone to Wickham. It's purely and simply because, and you can mark my card, is effectively that will move within three years from Wickham to Oxford, to the John Radcliffe. That is absolutely fact. We've seen the A&E go from High Wycombe. We've seen general medicine go from High Wycombe. It's all now at Stoke Mandeville with all the difficulties that 20 miles on B roads are to get to. And we know there is, it's not anecdotal, it's fact. We have old people who are cancelling appointments because they can't afford to travel to Stoke Mandeville, they're paying £40 for taxes. It, this, it's all been documented and effectively is what's happening in South Bucks now is going to happen around here. 
But exactly as you said, it's inevitable. And the only way that you're going to get something done, and I think the hub and spoke principle is good, is effectively is people to start pestering their MP, bombarding them and every other one with letters and requests and everything else. John and I have actually sat in Andrew Ramsley's office and he's acquiesced to requests that we've made. And the power so has nothing to do with why it went, by the way. No. <laughs> but effectively, what's happened is, is he put a report out to be done by somebody from, is it the Central? The Strategic Health Authority. The, the Strategic the Health Authority. Last November, she still has not completed her report. Is you know, I mean, this is absolute scandal because it all related to Wickham. 40,000 people actually said, we don't want these changes. So what did they do? They just moved it three months and then after three months, they just went on and did what they want. So it's basically up to you to get onto your MPs to say, get something done is, you know, because that's where the power is, and but you are the people that are going to have to drive it. Well, thank you, Terry. I mean, I, I hope you've also noticed tonight, I haven't been at all part of this, okay? Um, this is going to happen irrespective of whether you have a Labour government or a social government, okay? Because it's a direction of travel that is inevitable for a whole variety of positive reasons um, that we become much better at medicine. But as we become much better at medicine, we need more and more specialists because general surgery is subdivided with people.